Okay, so we're standing here in the rain outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, Hurricane Zeta has passing through and what's uh, the remnants of her anyway. And uh, as you'll see, we're getting a fair amount of rain when it's all said and done, about three inches or so. And our basement is nice and dry because the gutters are clean and they're clear. And we make sure that the water goes away from the foundation and if you look at the foundation, you can see that the dirt actually grades away from the foundation. Often people don't realize that the dirt will actually go toward the foundation, making a hole, and that's where water accumulates, uh, and that can cause a lot of basement flooding. So in Virginia, the code states that for every 10 feet away from the foundation, the soil should slope and drop six inches. So that's not a big drop. That's actually pretty shallow and pretty easy to do. So we're gonna walk through here and we're gonna go into the basement. See if I can do this without killing myself. And then we're gonna take a look at the sump pumps. through the doomsday bunker of love. And then, as we get into the little area with the sump pump, you'll see with all that rain that we've had, you might not be able to see that well, the lighting's not great, but there's just a little trickle of water coming in from the French drain system around the foundation. So, what we can do, just to make sure that the sump pump works, is we can water test it. And through the magic of video, we have a water source here we brought in. So let's give it a try. And the sump pump kind of works opposite of your toilet. The toilet drops down and then that gets the water going. Well, the float on the sump pump actually rises and then that's what sets off the sump pump. So we know that works. We also have a battery backup sump pump, which I highly recommend. Uh, this one runs off a deep cycle marine battery. And you can test it as well. I can sit there and, and pump water into it again, but there's a couple other ways I can test it. One, I can use a grabber and grab the float and pull it up. Or I can just press the pump button. And it's kind of noisy down there, but you'll see that the uh, sump pump, battery backup sump pump, has been activated. So they're quiet down, the water will drain a little bit. Now, when you have a battery backup sump pump, you need a deep cycle marine battery. Some people make the mistake of putting a regular car battery in there. Deep cycle marine batteries are designed to charge and discharge numerous times without destroying the cells. A regular car battery is designed really just to stay charged and topped off. So if you charge and discharge a regular car battery, it's going to kill the battery pretty quickly. It's going to be worthless. So let's take a look here, and then we'll give you a little twofer. And so this deep cycle marine battery uh, has the water cells in it. And so we're going to test the water, not test it, excuse me. We're going to pop these lids off, and we're going to take a look and see, make sure there's water in there. And it's difficult to see, I know. Let's see if I can get a little bit better light in here. The water should really kind of come up to those little flanges that poke down in there. I know it's really hard to see. Um, and so the water here is just a little low, so I'm going to fill it up and top it off. And tell people, when you fill them up and top them off, don't use tap water. Tap water has too many minerals in them you should use just distilled water. And through the magic of video again, we've got a little bit of distilled water here. Let's see if I can get it in there without spilling it all over the place. There we go. Not too bad. We'll wipe some of that off, obviously. And then you'll see as well that I put a date on the battery. That comes from my old restaurant days where I dated everything that came in 
so that I know how to rotate it out, particularly when it comes to food. And then again, you can take a look at this control panel and you'll see that it has all the lights telling you what's going on. The charger is charging. It's got a green light. If something sets off the pump, sometimes the pump light will come on. And then this particular pump system has a little tap that goes in the original battery that came with the watchdog system. It's a, it's a nice system. It's a battery. It comes dry. You have to have to you have to buy all the materials, distilled water and the acid to go in there and mix it up and put it in there. And then there's a little probe, this little probe right here, and a little hole, and it taps down in there, and it'll tell you the water level. So I replaced the battery. I didn't want to buy another one and have to deal with all the acid and stuff. And if you don't replace the battery, uh, excuse me, the water probe, then it's going to chirp at you, telling you have low water. So the Watchdog website says just to take that probe and attach it to your positive uh, pole there in your connection. If you do that, then it's not going to tell you when the water is low, so you do need to check it occasionally. And so that's pretty much it. I hope that helps out, and I hope everyone stays warm and dry during the storm season.